Hi guys, welcome to biology. I'm sorry I can't be there with you today, but I've obviously recorded our lesson um, in hopes that you will not um, fall behind just because I couldn't be there. I'm fine, by the way. I'm not being quarantined or anything. Um, my husband just needed to have a procedure done um, at a doctor's office and he needed to have a driver there with him. So that was me. I'll actually be back in the classroom later today to pick up the assignments that I've asked you to drop off. And um, you can always come try to find me um, during seventh period or after school if you have any questions about today's lesson. I'm gonna start by um, going through a PowerPoint that um, covers the different attributes of life and um, let me get that big enough here. Now these attributes of life are um, attributes that we studied in the seventh grade, if you had me as a teacher, and we called them the six characteristics of living things, and we talked about them all through um, the class in seventh grade. And um, you may remember that I brought in like a, I think I put this plastic fish in a beaker with water and then I, sh it was like a clownfish. And then I also showed you a video of, you know, living clownfish swimming around in an aquarium. And I asked you to think about the differences between the living fish and the plastic fish. Um, and of course the similarities as well. And from that we drew out um, the six characteristics of living things. And you may remember, and if I were there with you, we'd play a little game to see um, who remembered. I'm sorry I can't be there for that, but um, you may remember that they are um, all living things grow, all living things require energy, all living things have a lifespan, all living things respond to the environment, all living things are made of at least one cell, and all living things reproduce. Now, in 10th grade, that list really isn't um, different. They use some different kind of more mature sounding vocabulary to describe it, and then they add some things to it that we didn't talk about in 7th grade. Well, we talked about them, but they're kind of extensions of the other um, attributes. So. Um, because we talked about them so much in seventh grade, I'm not going to give you a separate note sheet on this. I'm just going to go through them. And if you need to review them before your quiz, you can look through pages 21 to 23 of your text. And I have that written down in Canvas if you need to remind yourself of where that is. Um, Speaking of Canvas, let me remind you that you do have a quiz on Wednesday, and uh, that should not be news to you. It's on objectives 1.01 to 1.06, so just be ready for that. Um, okay, so we're just, like I said, going to pretty quickly run through that list um, and then move on to something else. So all living things exhibit movement. That's one that we didn't differentiate in um, seventh grade. And that movement can be internal movement, which is, is true of all living things. So even a single celled organism exhibits internal movement because there are always things moving around through its cytoplasm. But then even something like a tree can exhibit internal movement when water is moved from the roots through the xylem out through the leaves. Um, some living things, really many living things, also exhibit a type of motion called um, or movement called locomotion and that's when a an organism moves from one place to another. I should tell you like when we talk about living things remember we're talking about like all of the kingdoms of living things so we're talking about the bacteria, the algae, the um, protozoa, the fungi, the um, animals and the plants. So what I'm listing here is true of like I said, internal movement, all living things, locomotion, many living things. So a lot of the pictures that I'm showing are animals in this slideshow just because I think they're cute. But um, just remember that it's not just animals, it's all of the kingdoms of living things. Okay, so all living things exhibit movement, all living things achieve growth, which of course just means that they grow. We talked about that in seventh grade. 
Um, growing can mean that you see an increase in the size of the organism, like this big fat cat here, which I hope is Photoshop, but it kind of doesn't look like it, so I don't know. Um, if it's increasing in the size of the organism, then new cells are added to existing cells. But um, we also call it growth when new cells replace older ones and there is not an increase in the size of the organism. So you just want to know that when we say grow, um, that we mean that it's not just that they grow bigger, it could be that they grow new cells, grow new skin cells all the time or something like that. All living things are able to reproduce, like these little cute bunnies. We had that in seventh grade. All living things come from similar pre-existing life. This is, of course, the idea that was solidified by the spontaneous generation experiments that you just um, studied this weekend. All living things have a similar chemical makeup, which means that when we look at their molecules and the atoms that make up their molecules, they're very similar between, you know, bacteria, fungi, protists, animals, plants are all made up of the same um, basic chemical elements in similar compounds. So this little set of canisters is just supposed to represent the six most common um, elements in all living things. And you see their abbreviations from the periodic table there. So we have C for carbon, H for hydrogen, then nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Those six um, elements make up like 99% of all living things. So even though the periodic table is huge and there's a lot of elements in there, most of those um, don't make up living things. All living things are composed of at least one cell. In seventh grade, we said are made of at least one cell. Those are just obviously the same thing. And if I was with you, I would ask you if you could tell me what's going on in those cells there on that picture. Why do some of them have those squiggly lines in them? And um, I bet you guys could tell me that they were undergoing mitosis. And then I would really pick your brain and ask you if you could tell me the different phases of mitosis that some of those cells were in. All living things exhibit irritability, like this child there who looks like pretty angry. But when we say exhibit irritability, we don't really mean that they're angry. We just mean that they um, respond to stimuli. In seventh grade, the way we said that was that they respond to their environment. Check the time. Okay. All living things require energy. Um, without energy, your cells die, and if your cells die, um, then you die because the cells do the work of an organism. And this is why living things have to have some source of nutrient um, and why animals, you know, eat. And they also have to have um, oxygen. Now, some things can live without oxygen, and they have a slightly different way of doing things. Um, but most living things require oxygen because they require energy. All living things maintain a high level of organization, and we're going to start talking about that organization today. What they mean by that is like if you looked at a complete, say, multicellular organism, um, like say a dog, that organism is made up of organ systems like the respiratory system, digestive system, um, integumentary system, etc. The systems are made up of organs like heart liver, lung, stomach. The organs are made up of tissues, which are groups of cells that perform a particular function. The tissues are made of cells. The cells are made of molecules. The molecules are made of atoms. So we're actually going to start at the bottom level of that organization in this class and start talking about atoms and molecules today, and particularly the atoms and molecules that make up living things. But all life is highly organized. Even a single-celled bacterium is very organized um, inside of its one cell. And I think this may be the last one, which I guess is appropriate. All living things face death 
in our seventh grade class, we would have said all living things have a lifespan or all living things have a beginning and an end, something like that. So if you are a living thing, then the things that we had, you know, all by like internal movement, um, growth, all those other things um, are true of you, no matter what kind of living thing you are. Um, like I said, I think <laughs> if you need to review these concepts before a quiz, you can look in your book and the pages where this information is covered are listed on Candace. It is pages, um, they are pages 21 through 23, in case you're interested. Okay, so my um, motion sensor, oh, there we go, just told uh, my lights to turn off, so I had to shift a little. All right, so, um, that's sort of an introduction to just what a living thing is. Like I said, we're gonna now talk about the levels of organization within living things, and we're gonna start way down at the atom. So 